All right, Dragon Brood. Today, today, I'm doing something. I know y'all like theme decks, and I hadn't done a werewolf deck for a while, so today, we're gonna try some Jund werewolves. Now, that being said, we're gonna try a bunch of different card drive because Jund effectively, or Riveteers, whatever you wanna call them, got a lot of added cards into New Capenna that could actually help out werewolves. So I put together a list, and we're gonna see if we can hang on the ladder because it has all the right parts, but we have to see if it comes through in execution. So let's get to it. If you're looking for awesome protective gear for your cards, be sure to check out shop.ultrapro.com slash powerdragon and use promo code powerdragon to save 5%. And that's on everything on the site, including this month's ocean blue collection or anything else you decide to pick up. All right, as always, don't forget to join the channel. Lots of cool benefits, especially if you wanna get your decks featured here or get access to exclusive videos and whatnot. All the details are down below if you click the join button. Now, all right, this is gonna take a little bit to get through this deck list because I feel like I'm gonna have to justify several choices as to why we're trying things here, but it all really does make sense. Okay, so starting at the top, we're playing Blood Chiefsters. And I know some people really debate on what their removal packages are gonna be. Here, I decided I wanted to go for Blood Chiefs Thirst for two reasons. One, a lot of the problem cards you deal with are either Planeswalkers, which come out later, so it doesn't really matter that this would cost us four, though it is going to be too black to do what we want to do. Or it's going to be creatures that are small early, right? Where we're talking about runes, mono white aggro, even the red based aggro decks that we're seeing. Being able to pick off an early creature is important. The other thing is that we're going to be using our mana pretty much every turn, at least I think so. And if we are, we want to be able to have the cheapest removal possible to be able to get the job done. So hopefully this works to do what we want. I'm playing one Valky because I had a spot left and I figured, what the hell? Why not go with the Valky here? Seems to make a lot of sense. It's something we can do late in the game. But if we have nothing else early, we just play it, look at the opponent's hand and get some information. Three Outland Liberator. Uh, this was pretty important to me for two reasons. One... One of the benefits of playing Werewolves as a whole right now is there are several decks that are wanting to play defensively, right? They want to spin their mana and play their cards on your turn instead of theirs. That means we're going to get to flip our Werewolves more than we probably should, so that's a benefit. If so, then this is exactly the type of card you want. Every time it attacks on the backside, you're going to get to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. However, even just being able to sacrifice it, like, there's tons of stuff we can kill, Right? So many of the decks are playing Fable the Mirror Breaker. So many decks are playing uh, Wedding Announcement, right? So there's all types of stuff, like, you know, even Chariots, if you want to kill those, right? Every deck seems to have something right now we can kill with it. So we don't hate this at all. Now, we're only playing two Werewolf Pack Leader. And I know this card's good, but the truth is, because we're playing three colors, there's going to be a lot of times we may not want to play this on turn two. Because of our pathways and whatnot, we may want to make sure we get to all three of our colors on turn three, possibly, or depending on what our hand looks like, we may go ahead and play two green and then a red or some such, right? So we can't go heavy on these, but I do like what it offers. I do like getting the option of an extra card, getting a trample creature. So it's still reasonable to play. We just won't always be looking to play it on turn two. Kessig Naturalist, again, we want the mana. We want to be able to take advantage of all of our cards in this build. So definitely gonna go with the four of these. We could have switched up and played an extra Liberator instead of this, which I think is a reasonable call, but we're going to go ahead and just play four of these for now and see how we like it. Three Graveyard Trespasser, nothing fancy here. We're playing black. It's a quality card. If it flips, you get a 4-4. It's also hard for the opponent to remove because it costs them a card, which we like. Nothing wrong with that. Now, I know this is going to be silly, but one Fable of the Mirror Breaker for two reasons. One, it can get us extra mana, so if we're trying to hit double colors for various reasons, it could help with that. It can help us dig a little bit if we're looking for an answer. And being able to copy any of our werewolves is probably going to be a pretty good proposition for us overall. So, we're playing one just to try it. In the end, maybe we want to replace it with another Valky, or maybe we want it to be another Liberator, or whatever. I don't know. But I figure it was at least worth a try to play one of them. Four Reckless Storm Seekers. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up too is like we do have some things for hasty abilities, right? And I do believe in haste a lot against the mid rangey decks, against the sweepers, against the meat hooks, all that stuff. This card's very good. And again, if we get to flip this on the backside, it's a lot of damage. So yeah, we're definitely playing four of these. And it's easy to cast because it only has one red in the cost. 
We've got two op Nixilis, and this is for those matches that could potentially go long. If it looks like, you know, they're going to play an early sweeper of some kind, cool, we go ahead and ditch one of our creatures to play Obnixilis, and then you put your opponent in a position, right? Because then now they've got to get rid of these two obs, or they're going to have to try to get rid of whatever creature you kept to attack with. And this is good if you go, like, turn two creature, turn three, say, like, Tovalar, turn four, Obnixilis, sack your two mana thing. So now you're putting opponent like, okay, they don't want you to draw cards, but they also need to get rid of these Obnixilis or whatever, and you can kind of cause some different tough decisions for your opponent, which is always a good thing. Of course, we're playing Tovala. We're playing three of these. Could play a fourth, honestly. If you wanted to replace, like, the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, I could see that being a thing here. But I also didn't want to get caught with drawing multiples and not being able to cast them. So, good with that. We're going to try out Riveteer's Charm. You know, partly because there are some situations where it is good to be removing a graveyard, right? When your opponent's got something like Leers and things like that. Could be very beneficial. Uh, there's also some random, uh, like, combo-y stuff with uh, Bombardment. So if you can clear their graveyard, it's good against that. But also just being able to look at the next three cards. Like, a lot of times, if we're just looking for one haste thing, or maybe we're looking for one thing that pumps our team, or one Halana and Elena, you know, anything like that, just digging deeper to get that one out that we need, really big deal. So hopefully it plays out the way we want. Playing two Eska's Chariots, mostly because... I couldn't figure out what else I wanted in the slot. I really debated if I wanted to go with the dragon, if we wanted to go with one of the bigger werewolves, but ultimately I settled on this because it's easy to cast. It can get us two creatures, and again, it's something that still sits out there after sweepers. It's got good synergy with the Stormseeker and with Alana and Elena, so we liked a lot of what this card does for the deck. And then, of course, I've mentioned it a few times now, three Alana and Elena partners. It's not a werewolf. But my goodness, if this card's not fantastic, and since we're playing the colors, why not? And then I'm going to make Guilty Face here and be sad, but we are playing two Meat Hook Maskers. I couldn't justify not playing it, truthfully. Because, again, you can end up in a defensive situation if you're on the draw and your opponent gets that one mana, two mana, three mana start. Maybe you pick off one thing, they try to flood the board, and then your turn four, turn five, you go ahead and Meat Hook, reset things, then start dropping a bunch of werewolves, right? That might be our best scenario. But also remember that you can massacre your own stuff and then finish off your opponent that way too. So it does have some flexibility. And if nothing else, you can play it for zero against the decks that have all the sweepers. And then you just get some incidental damage anyway. So we're going to play just two. I don't think we need more than that since we also have all of the like River Tier Charms, Blood Chief's Thirst, whatever. I think we're mostly fine with just two meat hooks. And then our land package is one Shatter Skull Smashing, a Den of the Bugbear, a Mountain of Besaju, a Forest, Lair of the Hydra, four each of Blightstep, Dark Boar, and Crag Crown Pathway, two Rockfall Vale, and four Zia Torres Proving Ground. So yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a mess, but hopefully it gets us where we want to go. Anyway, strap yourselves in. This should be a lot of fun. As always, if you check out the end of the video, we will talk about what cards we liked, didn't like, what we would replace or not. And then we'll also have a card spotlight for you as usual. So for now, we'll catch you on the other side. Oh man, I feel like it's been so long since I've played werewolves. Um, let's mulligan this. Alright, this is more of what I was hoping to have in an opener. Question is, you know what? Nah, we just scrapped this. I'm gonna gamble on the no removal. Could end up being a mistake, but we're on the play. We'll run some of these out and see what happens. Probably still go Naturalist, I think. So let's go ahead and play this. Opponent has a bounce spell. Makes sense. <clears throat> Don't have a problem with that. And nothing from their side. So now we get big werewolves. Hmm. Okay, I think we still go with this. I mean, they can kill it. Make disappear. Okay, fair enough. Not the worst thing, I suppose. We will just go through the motions. I guess now we have to play this for the damage. Knowing there's make disappears. Though they didn't have one that time. And they don't have a way to kill this. At least not at instant speed. So that's good to know. 
Mm, so there's a chance we could get Tovalar through, but we'd probably like to see them play a tapped land or something here to make that a little bit easier. And they are not going to do that for us. But they didn't have the removal card last time, so I'm going to assume they don't have it this time. They don't. All right. Now, Meat Hook could very well still be a thing. And if it is, it is. But they'd have to Meat Hook for four, so... I mean, we'll see what happens here. We're two mana away from resolving a Valky, which would be pretty sweet. And unfortunately, this matchup, we have two... <laughs> Uh, Blood Chief stars here that probably are only going to get to kill a vampire, I mean a vampire, but a planeswalker, and that's probably about it. Okay, big score. They're going to go looking for some damage. Or probably like a dragon's fire to let them kill something. Hmm. So, not sure what type of deck this is, other than just being a quality removal type deck. I'm not sure if giving them the treasure is good or bad here. Hmm. Uh, giving them the treasure feels like a little bit of a trap. And they would be able to meet hook anyway for three now. Unless we just don't do anything this turn, which is not great. So, I'm going to go ahead. At least I get two cards out of the exchange. Unless, again, they have removal of some kind. But if they do, they do. We're not going to worry about it. I mean, if you shoot it with a... I don't know. Nope, they're making treasure. I was thinking maybe they could have had, like, Voltage Surge or something. They still might. I mean, could be a possibility. Nope, they're just going to let it happen? Huh. I mean, I guess they figure they can just kill everything next turn, so why worry about it? And they're not really wrong. Um, it's tempting to blow this up to kill a treasure. I'm not going to lie. But I say we just let it go. Because then we just try to resolve Valky and see what the hell happens. Okay, Goldspan Dragon. Sure. Gives them a lot of mana here after they attack. We might have to do one of those things where we, like, bait the opponent into using mana on our creatures and then Valky to kill, like, a Goldspan Dragon or some such. They might just be comboing off here, though. I mean, they've got the mana to do it. Our turn. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that makes wanting to do something else so much better. Huh. Well, crap. I have a feeling, though, if we played Talon, I mean, we'd be able to block a dragon, but that's not saying much. All right. Let's go to attack. Are they just going to let it happen? I would have liked for you to spend some mana there, opponent. Would have made me very happy. Okay. So what do we do with this information? We've got seven mana. I guess we spend four, try to kill Goldspan Dragon. Man, the problem is we know we could die to Sweepers. Like, this is seven. That's 11. They're only at seven. Ugh. I feel like I could have been more aggressive this turn. I probably should have just tried on the Helana and Elena. Ugh, what do we do now? All right. I'm your Huckleberry. I mean, they can counter it. Okay, they're going to bounce it. Get all the treasure, sure. I mean, I guess I'll play one of these. In the turn. And this is kind of like, you know, they can meet hook and play a dragon, I guess. And then we play Helena Elena on this thing. Or we just drop Valky and try to kill something. I don't know. They would still have four mana available. Or two mana available. So nothing's really guaranteed here. Okay, so they're just doing that. All right. 
And then what? I'm gonna get more treasure attacking, so they're not worried about our creatures, obviously. Hmm. All right, we're at nine. I'm assuming they have a way to kill at least two things here. Our only other out is maybe get another Reckless Stormseeker. Hole Breaker. Okay. So they're going to have at least one live spell here. Which means they're going to counter and bounce. Oh, they're just going to do that now. All right. This is interesting. Because then now we could remove a Hole Breaker with our Valky. Which is kind of interesting. But we are only at nine. Opponent would have to find another treasure to activate their land. But we could also leave things back to block. So... Huh. This actually did not play out at all how I thought it would, to be honest with y'all. This is this is a little different. Um... Okay. So if we Valky, we get rid of the Hole Breaker, knowing we're going to lose Valky next turn, hands down. But we get to attack and get a card. And we get to do at least two damage. We could Reckless Stormseeker, then Halana and Elena, pump, let's say, the 2-2 two -two attack. Three gets blocked, four gets blocked, so we only get three damage in. So that's not great either. Actually, I guess we get, yeah, some combination of three damage in. Um, no, not true. We would get four in. Either four or five. But it still doesn't end the game. So it's not what we want to do. I think we're going to do this. This is the most reasonable. And then we'll just exile this guy. And then if we attack, do we lose? Four, five, seven, eight. So we have to leave at least one thing to block. Or we already played a land for the turn, so drawing a land doesn't do anything. Uh, no attacks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah. We take five in the air, go to four, but then what happens if they play a blocker? All right. I, I don't think we can... I mean, I guess we can attack here with one of these. I'm not sure what they go get. But it's either block with eye twitch or give us a card. And we're only at nine, so they might be trying to formulate a way to just punch through here. Might, might be the thing. The, also, the reason I attacked like that is because if I left this back... It's two da It's a two-mana creature, which I could get rid of with a Blood Chief's Thirst, which I don't know if they're playing or not, but was a possibility. Yeah, you can definitely get some cards here if you want to reload your hand. That is real. But if this is their line of play, this means Goldspan isn't necessarily likely to attack. Unless they find a creature or two, like another eye twitch or something to play here. They're likely also going to just get rid of our Valky or our Tibalt one way or the other. But we only have like one real turn. So next turn we kind of... not. I say that. We do have a hole breaker. If we can find another land, we could hole breaker plus something. They know we have access to the hole breaker, so it's not really a secret. Okay. They took a spike field hazard. They're going to kill our Tovalar? I mean, they have access to a lot of mana still after they attack. If they attack. Oh, their hand must not be good if they're not attacking. Okay, I was going to say. If they're not attacking, that was about to be insanely ridiculous. Alright, we go go to five unless they have a way to pump this. It's very tempting during their end step to blow up their treasure, too. You know, to take away options. Especially since we know we have this much damage in hand. I 
I mean, what else are they looking to do here? Okay, let's say we blow up their treasure. We play Helena and Elena, we play Reckless Stormseeker. Stormseeker gets a pump, Helena and Elena to three, so something's an attack for five and three and three block the five so that doesn't kill them so we kind of have to just they're gonna block the biggest thing here anyway so we might as well just roll with what we got did not find a land but let's see if we can find one with this okay we did so now we can hole breaker man the thing is we know they have spike field hazards now too so that's a little bit scary but let me make sure I do the math right. If they block four, they take three, four, five. Yeah, I guess we just gamble. I mean, if if they got it, they got it. I'm just wondering if I should Stormseeker instead. I mean, not Stormseeker, but Holebreaker. Man, I'm sorry I'm playing so slow, guys. I just don't know. This is a very, very thin spot here. And we could play this, play Holebreaker. I'm not play Holebreaker, play Stormseeker. All right, let's do this. Play this. Play this. Give this a bonus. Give this a bonus. And then attack, 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 attack. And then Helena, Lena stays back. We're good. Okay, we get to go first, but uh, this hand's not great. Way too slow. This is much better. So we'll keep this. Let's scrap. I think I'm going to get rid of Obnixilis here. Don't think that's what we're in the market for at the moment. Delver. All right. We can kill a Delver. However, we're going to do this for now. We'll see if they flip their Delver or not. They do not. This is kind of interesting too, right? Because, oh, they let us flip our duder. I was not expecting that to be a thing. Huh. Well, now what do we do? I think we attack. See if they want to do something to our Lord of the Uvenwald. Uh, let's make green. We might want to play a pack leader post-combat. Alrighty. See if you want to do something about that. You could bounce it or something if you want to. We're down. Oh, you're fading hope that. Fair enough. Okay, do you have another, is the question. They do not. Alright. The Delver is back. Or a Delver is back, I should say. Counter? Yep. We're okay with that. Lucky for us, we got more fuel where that came from. Opponent still does not get to flip a Delver. Which is interesting, because it means they probably just have all the spells in their hand. Sure, sounds good. Uh, for one? It's probably gonna get spell snared or whatever, but why not? Nope, looks like not. Alright. Okay, that's all that took. <laughs> Ooh, boy. This was close. If, we, if any of these would have been a two-mana thing, swap any of these for a two-mana creature, I probably would have kept this hand. But as it is... It's a little slow, and we don't have a third land, so it's mulligan. Oh, this is no better. I would have just kept what we had. Um, all right, we'll keep this. Oh boy. Um, man, Helena and Lena's too good. All right, let's hope the opponent doesn't have a lot of removal stuff, or we find a two mana thing here. That would that would make life a little bit easier. Another Delver deck. All right, we did find a two mana Duder, which is good. Let's see if it survives. Looks like they're gonna flip their Delver. Usually if there's a pause. Oh, they, they didn't. Usually if there's a pause, they, that means they found something to flip it, but I guess not. 
All right, so this puts us in an interesting spot on what we want to do spell-wise. Like, do we want to lead with the Reckless Stormseeker? Do we want to play Trespasser first, knowing that they're playing? Because the other thing, too, here is you have an opponent who's playing defensively, so whatever we play is likely going to get to flip. That's the thing, playing werewolves. So unless they have a bunch of bounce spells or something, we're probably all right. Oh, see, now this is interesting, too. Because now we could play our dude and still kill a Delver. So I guess we do this first. And get them while they have the least mana available. They're probably just going to bounce their creature. Which if they do, we're okay. Either way, we're playing a naturalist. It's whether they want to protect their own... Oh, they have a slip out the back. Okay, that's fair. Alright. Alright. Their Delver still did not flip. So I'm guessing that means they're holding all the spells in hand and then drawing lands. Either lands or creatures. I mean, either way, we're fine. Oh, okay, they have some green mana. So that explains some things. Oh, okay, so th this is the type of thing we're doing. All right, fair enough. Um, You know, it's almost worth attacking and trading. But I don't think I quite want to. Uh, we'll get rid of this, I guess. And no attacks. They finally flipped their Delver. And they have a way to put counters on it. So this is going to get to be ugly real fast. We are going to want to draw mana for our Halan and Elena. Maybe I should have played Fable last turn. Not good that the opponent wants to spend 3 damage here either. Okay, Toski annoying. They get a card, but that's neither here nor there, really, in the grand scheme of things. That's okay. It's more about, can we draw lands? We cannot. That sucks. Hmm. So now what do we do? We're in a bad spot here, folks. We're in a real bad spot. Ah. <sighs> Man, Helena Elena is probably like our best play here. But we can't play it until post-combat, which means we put the naturalist at risk. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, I think this is just a case where our mana didn't come together. We'll just do what we can. I don't think the color matters. And if the opponent has a bounce spell or something, we're probably pretty just wrecked, right? Yeah, this is one we're just going to have to give up. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to sit here and think, I wish there was something better we could do here, but there's really not. Alright. I mean, we'll block Toski. Put Alana and Elena at risk. Yeah, Toski has to attack, but that is what it is. Yeah, I'm not going to be dumb enough to block the elite. Just, we'll take whatever damage comes from that. Yeah, it sounds good. If we, if Alana and Lena dies here, they die here. We're going to take probably, I'm assuming, 8 or 9 damage here. Go to 6, which puts us in a precarious spot. Only benefit is, if something dies here, we would get a benefit from the Graveyard Trespasser. Okay, so they only had one spell. However, they do get to draw two cards here. And I can't think of a way we're going to be able to get enough damage in to survive. This is nice, but I don't know what it does for us post-combat. Because even if we draw, there's no creatures in the yard. Mm. We might just be dead. I'm trying to think, though, like... If we play the Fabled, we'd be able to give the 2-2 two, two haste, leave Helena Lena untapped. That could get us two mana from the treasure, and we could play this as a blocker. Can't imagine there's any way that works. Yeah, I think we're just dead. We just failed to draw any mana through the key spots where we needed it. Alright, cool. GG's. Let's move along. 
Ooh, we get to go first, huh? All right, let's do it. I mean, we just need to draw one land, right? It's not that hard. Famous last words. Okay. I mean, not the way we expected to get there, but let's see if this works. Odds are they have some kind of removal here, but that's okay. It's not like we're not going to play spells, right? Pay three life. Let's get one of these duders out. Give this haste. Really? Nothing? Wow. Okay. Well, let's see what you got, opponent. Wedding announcements. Good news. We have things for our wedding announcements. Uh, yeah. Let's do this. We'll give this haste. We'll attack with all three. Draw a card. Opponent's gonna block three. Take five. Uh, let's put a stop during their second main, just in case, before they get their end of turn trigger. We might want to blow that up. Uh, pass. Nothing. I mean, you definitely got to have something, because you're not just going to let us take our turn here with four mana up and all your colors represented. Something's got to give. Okay, Wandering Emperor makes sense. Anyone who harms my people must contend with me. Don't target that opponent. We're just going to sacrifice it. Why would you... Okay, I tried to help you. They don't get the life now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this would have been sweet on the play. I think we got to keep this, though. I mean, we could turn two this, turn three this. If we get lucky, find Helena and Elena. There's some opportunity to use our Riveteer charm to get rid of something, maybe. Oh, of course they have the great start, though. Yep. We're not going to be able to beat this draw, unfortunately, unless we find, like, Blood Chief's Thirst or some such here, I think. Okay, there is a Blood Chief's Thirst. Just trying to decide if it's what it's worth it to get rid of. I guess we just do this first, right? I mean, because whatever we play is probably getting removed next turn, just being real about it. So, probably our best plan. Ugh, opponent just had all the things. Okay. Also means we're going to lose value on our graveyard trespasser because they're going to be removing stuff from our graveyard. Not good. Huh. What do we do? <sighs> Boy, I don't love it. But do we wait and do that? Is that too greedy? And then try to get two creatures in the way? I mean, I guess we do this, right? Because if they target the Trespasser, they'll have to discard at least one of the other things in hand. Then maybe we get lucky, Riveteer Charm, like the three power creature, survive some amount of damage and then figure it out after that. I mean, we could also Halana and Elena, hope that survives. I mean, like, I don't know. Not in the best spot here. Do we try to trade with the Sentinel? We're at 17. We probably get away with Halana and Elena next turn. I mean, I guess we try. If they just protect it, they protect it. That's probably what's about to happen. But they'd be spending a spell to do it, so I guess it's fine. No, they didn't. They just traded straight up. Okay. That was not what I expected to happen. Huh. Well, hmm. All right, here's hoping. I don't know, maybe their hand's just like warrior angels or something. I ain't got a clue. Okay, touch the spirit realm. I did not expect to see that as a card, but uh, there we are. Okay, we're going to take six here. Okay. Man, you know what I was really hoping to draw there? The little 2-2 two, two 
destroy an enchantment, dude. Would have been awesome. Uh, but no such luck. I was really thinking that could have been huge there. Get us back Alana and Elena. See if we could do something next turn. Now we're kind of up against it. We really didn't get anything going here. An opponent had a pretty good hand. I mean, I'm not kind of really upset with anything we did this game. Just stuff didn't quite work out. I mean, we can't really take six here realistically, right? But do we even do anything here? We prevent three, the opponent gains life, and then saves both their creatures. I mean, I guess we do it anyway, though. I mean, it opens up the door for possibly River Tears Charm to get to kill something. Maybe. Oh, they didn't even save their creature. Oh, boy. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what that was about. Okay, well, we need some help here. We're only at five. We need another two mana thing, really. Kind of where we're at. Or that. That's the other solution. All right, so here we actually need to attack so that we can meat hook for four. Silly as that is. I mean, opponent is not likely to block, but maybe they do. I mean, we have double black already, so we're not worried about that. All right. We will put this in tapped, do this for four. See if this gets us through. Okay, we still get to kill everything. All right, that buys us a little bit of time, and we have a River Tears Charm, so if they don't do anything, we could look at cards. I can say if they do something, then maybe we have to kill a creature. All right, this gives us the option of both. Excellent. Don't know. I mean, we're so low, but I kind of want cards, if I'm being honest. Let's resolve. Let's let it get taken. That's fine. We could kill a creature, but I'm willing to gamble here. Actually, we could even turn our tree into a 1-1. One, one. I don't think so. We'll save that for a later turn. Until we have more mana this turn. All right, opponent gains life. We go to four. Uh, let's look at cards. Oh, boy. Glad we got those out of the way. Okay, that helps. That is very good. So this, we'll get a thing out of their yard. We'll play this duder. Uh, we'll lose this land because we can't do anything with it. All right. So now we can block a thing. We can remove a thing. Uh, you know what? We could risk killing that. But I don't think I want to. I think I want to block and then sack. And then we'll get this back. Much as I would like to get cards back, I think we just have to start getting back into a winnable position here. Is it another one? Okay, that we can live with. Okay, here we go. Now we're in business. Yep. Now we got it. Give this the bonus. We'll attack with this and this. Make another duder. All right. Love it. Okay. Whew, this has been a bit of work to come back in. We had to climb the ladder for real. Now we've got creature lands we can start... Whoa, green mana, where is that from? Oh, okay, this is just a humans list. I guess I should have noticed that from the cards that came up. Yeah, opponent says GG. Like, we're in a good spot there. As much as I like this, I don't like it enough to keep it. This feels a lot better. So let's keep this. Let's grab one of these. Let's play that. 
We're gonna go ahead and turn to, oh man, I wish that land would have been turn one. That would have been real nice. I could have naturalist first and then this turn would have let us naturalist plus liberator potentially, but okay. Well, if that's what the opponent wants to do, we've got other plans. It's just attack for three. And then I'm going to double ob on the opponent here. Just say we're going to put the pressure. If that's some type of counter or a doom scar. Yeah, they're giving up already. There you go. All right, I think we got to keep this. This hand's versatile enough that we can't really throw it back. Hmm, unfortunately, this is not what we want to see, though. At least if it's something like, I don't know, Aspirant, we can kill it on our turn. Okay, there you go. Now, this does mean we're going to have a harder... Oh, I, just as I say that, I was about to say, it means we're going to have a harder time killing a... Uh, Rafine, but we may not now. Because now they can play Rafine, we just make them sacrifice Rafine, and then we start trying to play things on our turn. Unless they have a backup Rafine, and then it just is what it is. Alright, they have a backup Aspirant, though. That is real. So let's go with this. Put this in tapped. Just to open up some options. Not to say they won't Rafine here still and get to attack with an Aspirant for, like, four. I mean, that's still a real possibility. Infernal Grass. All right, that's fair. All right, take three. Ooh. Well, does that even do anything for us is the next question. I think the plan here should be... Man, the problem is I don't have a combination of getting both of these out next turn. So we could play this in hopes that we can if we draw another green mana. Or either of a combination of these, I guess. But I think for now we do this. So if they do target it, we cost them a card and make things a little easier on ourselves. I think. Like I said, I'm not sure this is the best thing, but we're going to go with it. And we're still going to take some damage here for sure. But that at least helps us race a little bit. Then if they don't cast anything, we get to flip it. All right, we're going to take four, go to 14, because we're doing nothing about it. Still no Rafine in our sights, so that's a little surprising. I guess now they decide if they want to kill a Trespasser or not. They have not missed mana. That is for sure. Ooh, wedding announcement. Okay. All right, I guess this is where we just try to kill an Aspirant. I don't know if we're going to be able to get away with it or not, but... Maybe. Or do we... Uh, do we try Tovalar? I mean, I guess if I naturalist, we could still Riveteer Charm. And I kind of like that better. All right, that's fine. Let's go with that. And then we can try to set up something with Tovalar next turn if we're lucky. Uh, from my graveyard. We can at least drain him for one and gain a life. Opponent's probably not blocking. Or maybe they are. I don't know. Okay, they are going to block. Go figure. I mean, if we're going to do River Share Charm, we just do it now, right? So we have mana up in case there's a mana leak or some such, or whatever, mana equivalent, make us pay more. I mean, the only thing I can think of. Okay, that dies. I'm beginning to think maybe they just have Vanishing Verse or something. I mean, they could still target the trespasser they just have to give up a card and then they can't do anything to the naturalist with that so i don't know maybe there's a planeswalker here okay there's a planeswalker not the one i was thinking about but a planeswalker nonetheless you're ready for some mind games 
All right, making a ninja. Hmm. Bet you can't catch us. We've had some strange games today so far. All right, let's see what the opponent does to this. You didn't kill our other things, so I don't know if you're going to kill this or not. Like, we'll find out. Go to attacks. Would you like to block or kill our Tovalar? Like, I don't know. I feel like we're worried about a meat hook here for some reason. So I don't even know if I want to play the werewolf pack leader. But let's see. I feel like if they block, we're in meat hook territory. If they block both. Because then they would just be losing their creatures anyway. Oh, they're just going to trade those for that. Interesting. So no meat hooks? Is that what this is telling us? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, this feels so strange. Like, why? I'm so confused, y'all. I don't know what to do here. Um, I already played a land. Why do I feel like, like, I mean, they play this, they make it 2-2. Two, two. This could make another, oh, they have to draw a card. I feel weird. I think I'm not going to do anything, and this is probably the wrong play. I'm probably supposed to play a creature here, but their block confused me. I mean, this empties their hand. Okay, sure. So it was double vanishing versus all they had. God, I could have got away with it. I guess I would have lost the pack leader, but I still would have had one more thing. All right. Well, now we know. And if the opponent doesn't cast anything, we flip a Tovalar. So there's that. I mean, they, they might just meat hook just to kill it. Thanks. I don't know. I'll be taking that now. Okay, they discarded a land. For Fiend. Works. So that's important. Now do we just go for it? Uh, nothing in either... Oh, we do have a thing in our graveyard. Uh, all right. I mean, tis what it is. I mean, they get some extra cards with Rafine here if they want it. So they're going to get to see three cards this turn? Uh-oh, that's not good. Oh, I guess you're going to make that a 3-3. Three, three. Nah, that's fine. Good move. Get to see extra cards here. If they meet hook, they'd be left with just Rafine. Actually, that's not true, because they can meet hook for three and keep their 2-2 two -two now. That's pretty rough. Do we just die if that's the case? Oh, they only discarded one spell, though. All right. I mean, I guess that's reasonable. They have two There's things. No we can activate a creature out. land. Oh, they're cycling. This is good for us. This is very good. And they put a creature in the yard, so we get to drain one more. And our duders flip, because they didn't play anything. Okay. All right. Then I guess we're just going to try to go for it. Everything at the opponent? Opponent's at 11? Yeah. All right. We'll just... Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. We get to go first. Ooh gonna put us in a rough spot because i feel like well you know what let's keep it we'll put this one on green just so if we have to use blood chief's thirst we can and still cast liberator we'll still need to find a red for the storm seeker at that point but if we don't we'll still be set up for trespasser so i mean i guess it's mostly fine and any land we find that gives us another color should be pretty good so yeah we're gonna we're gonna go with this this is strange i think our opponent's just afk to start the match oh there they go all right. Maybe they were hoping for a free win because we would bounce out of the game. I don't know. But here we are. Do, 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 do. All right. Red mana means our liberator is probably not going to live very long. That's okay, though. If they're using it on that, I think we'd feel okay with it. Yep. Ronin. We take two. 
Wow, this is the slowest opponent for playing an aggressive red deck. <laughs> There's nothing in the way. We have no spells. We're auto-passing. Uh, our opponent's turn is taking a full minute to play a reinforced Ronin in attack. That amuses me. All right, now that we have two of these, I'm going to put this on red and hope to draw an untapped land. Don't know if back-to-back -back Stormseekers is going to be good enough, but we need an untapped land to make this happen regardless. Now, here's a real question. If the opponent does play that again, do we even block? I feel like the answer is yes, but I'm going to let the answer be no. Okay, they have a kill spell anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We don't get the choice to block. Great. So we just take two and go to 16. I wonder if there's somebody playing for mobile who's just playing or new to the game. Maybe that's what's happening. All right. 16 it is. We did get the untapped land, and it is a black one on top of that, which is even better. So we'll start here. Get a 3-3. We'll drain the opponent so we can get a little bit of life since we're playing against a red deck. This also means now if we get an additional untapped land, we can actually play this and kill something, possibly, if it's two mana or less. So I don't mind this at all. And if we block and they want to shoot it, then we get to kill that, they lose another card, and they have to discard a thing. So it's not the worst scenario, especially knowing that we've got Storm Seekers to start switching the life total battle. Now, if they go land, land, do all that, and then on their next turn, they play like a Raiju, that is going to be a little bit of a problem. We would probably have to leave open uh, River Tear Charm on a following turn. But I think I'm willing to do that. All right, looks like they're just going to straight up kill the Trespasser. Probably with the Royal Eruption or whatever. I mean, I really don't mind if we have to block and then they shoot it with like a play with fire and then they discard. Because then we basically got a three for one out of that deal. We would have got to kill a 2-2. Two -two, we get their burn spell. And we would have made them discard a card. Like, oh, wait. Wait a minute. All right. They did not play a spell. And we're not playing more than one a turn. So now it's on them to flip these back over. We got a lot of damage incoming, opponent. Yeah, this is going to be five. Whew. Okay, well, we won that one. I'm going to be honest, y'all. I don't even know why I waited so long to play this thing. Like, this this was amazing. Like, we had so many fun games and so many things that were, like, near misses. Like, this was cool. I mean, even off camera, I played another handful of games and it was great. So, I, I don't... I, I feel like, okay, I'm going to be honest, I feel like it overperformed. But even if it did, this was still a quality performance all around. Even if you gave it another loss or two, who cares? That's still way better than we thought it would be. So yeah, if you're looking to play some type of theme deck, werewolves might be the way to go. Who knew? Now, the random Fable of the Mirror Breaker, we didn't really get to see that in action, so I don't really know how I feel about it. But otherwise, yeah, that's like the one spot maybe worth changing, but it didn't hurt anything, and the deck actually still played pretty well. Right now, other than that card, I don't know if I would change much. We beat a variety of decks that, you know, you'd think we would have trouble with or whatever, but yeah, I mean, thumbs up. I don't really know what to say otherwise. I'm just surprised. It was a whole hell of a lot of fun, really. But now, for today's card spotlight, we're going to talk about Uruk of the Kralin Horde. And the main reason isn't really because of what this card does. I mean, it's a five mana, four, four, I think, and it comes into play and it pumps something up for four. And then when it flips, it can fight. However, it has a stipulation of being a non-werewolf you get to fight. I don't really know why, because it's not like it's that good if it gets to fight werewolves. But it honestly was a disappointment when it came out because it was one of the last cards previewed and everybody was kind of waiting for there to be this cool werewolf mythic. And you kind of got this thing that didn't really do much. Like it pumped a thing and that's kind of cool. And then if you somehow were able to get it to flip, and there was a few ways you could manufacture that, you get to fight something. But it was kind of like maybe hoping multiple werewolves got a bonus, or maybe you can make multiple werewolves fight a thing if it flipped, or anything. It really just didn't feel mythic, and I think that was the problem. Now, over time, people have just included it in their werewolf theme decks, and that's cool. And it's pretty cheap. It's three or four bucks, so it's pretty easy if you're going down that road and you just want to include all the werewolves. That makes sense. But yeah, just one of those weird parts of history where everybody was anticipating a card that uh, even before we got to see it in action, people were kind of disappointed with it. Now again, don't forget if you want today's deck list, it will be down in the description below along with links to all of our Facebook gaming pages, Twitch streams, all that good stuff. And you can join the channel. 
But all that aside, if you like this theme deck, I'm gonna link another one here because if you like this one, you're definitely gonna like that one since you're into themes. Have some fun. That's all I have for you for now. We'll see you next time.